now comes the issue that uh, you know how what is meant by the response of soil to the environments different type of environments. Uh, I think I had discussed about you know uh, soil and structures they interact with each other we call them as soil structure interaction and uh, soils are used to create structures and sometimes structures are created in the soil mass or sometimes the structures are created on the soil mass clear. So, laying the foundation is on the soil mass making embankments different type of retaining structures here with the soil mass and when you are creating conduits, cavities, tunnels uh, this is inside the soil mass. So, soil structure interaction is a very interesting question which people are trying to address yes. Each of these statement which I have talked about on, in and with has environmental attributes associated with it clear. So, when you are talking about the aerobic anaerobic conditions as deeper you go in the soils you will be having switch over from organic to inorganic situation alright uh, this is a good example. So, different type of environmental conditions might be associated with the systems which you are talking about. Now, pore fluid is the one which is present in the pores in the form of either gases or liquids or the combination and uh, present day you know uh, way of looking at this is uh, when you when you derive a parallel or equivalence between the human body and the soils is if I can diagnose you by taking some sample of your blood all right. Similarly, I can diagnose the soils or geomaterials by taking a sample of pore fluid. So, pore fluid is the one which is present in the pores either in the form of the liquids or in gases. We will discuss this in details how to extract pore fluid because there your syringes may not work what doctors do is not so it is very difficult to take out pore fluid from the soils. So, what type of techniques are used to sample pore solutions from the soils and the geomaterials it could be concrete it could be rocks it could be soils this has to be studied in a very very different manner. In other words the pore fluids also depict the state of the environment which is present inside the soil mass clear the temperature, the pressure, the humidity, the type of bacterial growth under aerobic anaerobic condition, the type of gases which are getting formed are an indication of what type of processes and the mechanisms are happening in the soil system. So, pore fluid characteristics are becoming very very important to uh, discuss. Interaction of soil with heat I think I gave you ample examples you know when uh, soils come in contact with elevated temperature uh, this could be a forging unit this could be uh, something like you know you might be having a furnace foundation for a furnace or you might be having a rolling forging unit somewhere in the industry where the drop hammer drops produces a lot of heat rocket launching pads uh, you know different type of cables which are buried inside the soils for industrialization and most of the time when you do ground improvement you inject chemicals in the soils and these soils might react with the chemicals. Nuclear waste disposal is a good example of how soil heat interaction occurs uh, nuclear waste is at elevated temperature. Similarly, the leachates which are coming out of the uh, landfills might also be at elevated temperature and this might react with the with the soils all right. So, I am sure you must be realizing that these issues these type of interactions have not been discussed until now in the conventional subjects because the conventional subject was devoid of the environmental conditions in which the soils are living are located all right. So, soil chemical interaction I am sure now is clear to you uh, contaminants getting discharged either inside the soil or on the soil mass uh, would create a soil chemical interaction and we want to see what happens after this interaction occurs. Soil bacteria interaction, I gave you ample examples you know pathogenic discharges uh, if the sludges are not treated properly and if you take out these sediments and pile them up somewhere uh, this is going to become a part of the environment. Soil root interaction I think we discussed about this. So, uh, those of uh, you who might get a chance to work in stabilization of soil based on vegetation is, is picking up 
and this is being done at several places. In my consulting also I have used uh, this concept of soil root interaction at different tailing ponds in the country and uh, where I have recommended vetiver grass if you are aware of vetiver grass, vetiver is the name of the grass. Uh, it grows very fast and the roots penetrate through the uh, soils vetiver, v e t i v e r vetiver. So, this is a variety of the grass which is uh, you know quite commonly available or you can transport it and you can you can uh, grow it on the slopes of or the embankments. So, the beauty is the root acts as a reinforcement and it holds the soils. So, you check the photographs I will also show you uh, it is a good example of how soil root interaction occurs. If you look at the uh, physics behind this roots produce suction all right and when suction gets created truly speaking this becomes a soil suction interaction clear a three phase system. That means the pores are now filled up with air water and uh, this dynamics of the air and water guides the properties of the soil. Similarly, soil bacteria interaction also does the same thing. Bacteria might be producing gases because of decomposition of the organic matter and once these gases produce and they remain in the soil, the whole system becomes very susceptible to temperature and pressure all right. So, these type of dynamics people are studying. Then of course, soil electrical um, in, in electric or charge you may say interaction. So, soil heat and soil electric phenomena could be coupled also. Passage of current through a conductor produces heat all right. So, this is a very interesting mechanism where people would like to study what happens. Water present in the soil is a dipole clear, it is a polar material, polar liquid. So, now if the polar liquid gets exposed to the electromagnetic field, how the properties of the fluid themselves will change all right. So, these type of things become very important when you are uh, talking about uh, different types of sensing tools which you are using them where the electrical signals are used to detect something in the soil mass. I will talk about this separately in the form of uh, electrical characterization of soils, thermal characterization of soils, chemical characterization of soils, biological characterization of soils and so on. The last in this series would be the soil and liquid water interaction. So, I am sure you must have come across that the soil which contains water and this water is of different types. We call this as environmental water also, we call this as a you know uh, gravitational water, free water, bound water, adsorbed water. So, these type of concepts are becoming very very pertinent in uh, discussion nowadays. So, just to show you some of the examples of uh, you know how this is being done. I think this is what I had been talking about. I will show you a few cases where the type of problem which I am dealing with uh, you know uh, this is a beautiful example of the problem uh, with which most of my students are related right now. Hindalco Industries is the largest uh, industry in the world which produces uh, alumina and production of alumina is because of digestion of bauxite. So, whatever residues are left over this is known as red mud. Now, the question is where you are going to throw the red mud. So, this is becoming a big problem for the society and uh, hope you can realize that lot of dust is there and you know uh, the disposal places have to be uh, defined very clearly and uh, if you see you know these are the red mud ponds and uh, I do not know how many of you have visited such type of red mud ponds. It is a huge area about 100 acres land where the height of the landfills or the height of the of the disposal ponds would be 40 to 50, 40 meters. So, it is a huge challenge you know the more and more bauxite which you are digesting to produce alumina the volumes of the red mud which is the industrial byproduct is increasing. And uh, if you research on this subject you will realize that uh, red mud contains lot of caustic in it. So, its pH is about 12 to 30. So, you are stacking a material on the on the surface of the earth which is highly basic in nature clear. So, this is the hazard associated with this. Now, the question is how would you handle this, how would you uh, 
uh, you know dispose it whatever uh, these are the challenges which you are supposed to handle now look at the second situation which i have included over here they have uh, several units in india which are operating and uh, this is from utkal uh, no this should be i think from uh, belgaum i don't know whether you have seen this or not uh, this is the refinery alumina refinery and when you drive from bombay towards uh, kerala or karnataka and then on the way uh, you will realize that there is a big stack of you know red mud and this is a national highway mumbai highway you can see so the handling disposal maintenance of these type of huge disposal facilities which have been created as a you know as a consequence of modern civilization is a big challenge brainstorm your session uh, to uh, brainstorm and uh, give the answers to the industry uh, this is the eastern part of the country from utkal which i have taken i don't know how many of you know this place uh, it's in orissa so this is a unit where the process is being done and the uh, disposal is being done at uh, several uh, kilometers away so piping pumping of the red mud or the industrial by products which are coming out is a big issue so designing of these uh, retention ponds is a big question big challenge unfortunately not many people are aware of uh, you know the practice of dealing with the uh, waste which is chemically activated had it been soils uh, 200 years 500 years thousands of years people have the experience of uh, handling with the soils and making a retention system but when it comes to the chemically active systems how would you handle them how would you use them how would you create something out of this is a big question uh, another example i thought i'll show you is uh, of uh, again the hindalco well this is from the renu coat uh, in the mirzapur district of uh, up so look at this i um, mean these are the so this is the renu river and uh, you know this is the belt where most of the thermal power plants are a lot of mining is going on and there is a huge plant where the alumina refinery is renu coat and look at this the way the red mud is being disposed and uh, now the question is how to tackle it in a scientific manner and uh, you should read about this accident which occurred some time back ajka aluminium plant you know which happened in hungary so these are the you know slope stability issues which you should be dealing with as environmental geotechnology a geotechnologist these are all soil water environment interaction examples so wcl coal mines uh, a lot of acid mine drains and drainage is taking place you know if you see zoom this system you will realize that a lot of mining is going on you know uh, these are the extra deep mines or which wcl is trying to do and uh, this is where i work on the mining issues geo environmental issues related to mining operations uh, these are the extra large mines i mean the diameter would be about 7 to 10 kilometers and they are trying to go up to several hundreds of meter deep in the ground to excavate the coal so these type of problems you can realize now if you see you know uh, you can imagine that a large portion of the soil has been cut so these slopes remain unstable most of the time you have to stabilize them i am doing a project right now at wcl bhanegaon project this is what is known as bhanegaon and i hope you can realize that uh, if i tell you the intricacy of the things uh, you know this is a river so most of the mines are you know in the vicinity of the rivers all right look at this this is a confluence of the mine uh, for the for the rivers this is one river and this is another river and this is where the mines are located so a lot of discharge takes place when you excavate and you know that becomes a very uh, critical issue that how would you do mining against uh, excessive discharge remember these are simple slope stability problems but then they are having an 
issue which is associated with the environment. It could be seepage, it could be chemicals, it could be temperatures, it could be bacterial pathogenic and so on. So, we are talking about different type of situations. Well, these are the challenges which we have to face as a geotechnical engineer in today's world. This is our landfill extremely close to IIT campus. This is the Devanar dumping landfill. Uh, when you go towards uh, VT from the east, Eastern Express Highway, uh, you will realize that a huge land and when you are landing inside the Bombay city, you know when the pilot announces cruise stations, landing at stations. So, that point if you start looking at down, then you will realize you can see the, uh, some part of the landfill quite clearly. So, this is another issue where uh, landfill fires took place in the recent past and the whole Bombay city had tough time. You must have seen the photographs which were released by NASA about 2-3 years back, you know. It shows the magnanimous nature of, you know, how much the landfills are um, responsible for uh, polluting the water bodies if the designs are not done properly. So, what you are seeing over here is this is the Devana dumping and uh, look at the population. The population is just right up to the brim of the landfill, you know, they are in fact living over there because they do not find the land. So, this is the modern day civilization which we are so much proud of. I hope you can realize, look at the densely populated uh, areas in the vicinity of the landfill. And then there are water bodies, streams of water uh, which are uh, getting polluted because of landfills, uh, leachates or the gases which are coming out of it, alright. So, this gives you a good example of what type of interaction we are talking about. So, I have talked about different sectors, industrial processes and even the, you know, at municipal level also the type of pollution which is uh, becoming a big threat to the modern day civilization, mining, dredging, we will talk about all these sectors slowly and slowly. So, actually uh, you were saying that uh, you are working with WCL sectors in case of mines. So, uh, what are the actual problems they are facing? Can you please name some? All problems and problems and problems only. Is there is the nothing right? which is not a problem there. Starting from site selection to dumping of the overburden to creation of the material for reclamation of the mines to stability of the mines to seepage in the mines to toxic water which is coming out of the mines, where to discharge it, how to treat it, how to put it back in the rivers to social issues, political issues, agricultural lands lost. So, many things how to minimize the area where the stacking can be more and more higher that is what everybody wants. Then how to utilize this material for other purpose. Yeah, so I think I can show you the uh, lagoons also in fact in Bombay. This is the Ghatkopar lagoon, you know. Have you ever seen a lagoon? So, these are the aerators which are aerating, yes mixing and aerating so that this uh, water gets cleaned up. So, these are the aerators which are installed over here and yeah. Sir, is it possible to quantify the strength that is provided by the vegetation uh, roots of the is it, is it possible to quantify the strength quantify yeah of course yes a lot of papers are there as a new subject altogether so they do you will be surprised to know that the geotechnical engineers take out the roots and they find out the tensile strength of the roots also and they implement it in the models which they have done 3d models so this is where the subject is so, all sorts of interactions are being modeled now in your softwares. How the properties change over a period of time. I mean, I remember I had written a proposal where I wanted to see how roots migrate in the soil. I wanted to capture everything electronically by using a set of sensors. And then I wanted to relate it to the growth of the canopy of the tree. <laughs> Somehow this project was not funded. So, all this happens. So, I wanted to study because see as I said uh, farmers will never study the mechanics of the problem beneath 200 to 300 uh, centimeters 
all right maximum because that is the zone in which they are interested beyond that is our realm so we have to understand how roots migrate for me is a is a tensile strength of soils when the roots migrate into it reinforcement of the soil because of the secondary tertiary roots and so on so my perception of looking at the problem is different yeah yes yeah, so quantification has been done please read recent papers so one more question is that that uh, you said about the acid drainage uh, by mining uh, is it possible through non mining activities like some construction of uh, tunnels or something so yeah so wherever you have pyrite pyrite or iron sulfide and when it gets exposed to the atmosphere oxygenated oxidized then sulfuric acid is going to get formed and how long will the effect la last how long means uh, no once the acid the comes out and starts flowing in the water bodies you read about what's happening in the assam most of the rivers are polluted people can't drink water so these are the issues so these are the contemporary issues you should be aware of you know what's happening how how would they do cultivation because if acids are present in the water this water cannot be used for vegetation yes please so uh, if we compare the strength of uh, roots of the plants will that be like uh, comparable to our geo materials uh, geo textiles let's me the biggest issue is without plant without plants without roots what is the strength of the material and if i grow them what's going to happen so an engineer always talks about pros and cons clear so sometime back i said that roots can be used grass can be used to stabilize the slopes now if i want to quantify the whole thing i would like to see from initial condition how much the material has got upgraded or it has deteriorated you never know the roots might deteriorate the rocks also you must have seen sometimes the vegetation on the you know concrete creates cracks also so this is where judiciously you have to understand the mechanism so maybe a very open ended answer to your question is that you have to observe what's happening and then you have to understand the whole mechanism so that's why i say that most of these mechanism the process require a lot of time of your life sir uh, can we use all type of plants means uh, for no there are type different of types of varieties i mean you should read in i mean i'm not a some plant are good pathologist for soil and some are not yeah like ground water depletion i agree with you yes 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 so that's a big subject what type of vegetation and uh, weight of the vegetation itself is going to be a big problem so suppose you are stabilizing the slopes and if you plant a mango tree over there it's going to be suicidal recently i read in punjab there was a problem related with ground water depletion due to paddy cultivation correct not paddy there are few trees which uh, uptake lot of water particularly eucalyptus is one there are different types of trees so this is where you have to sit down and you have to talk to the you know plant pathologists the guys who are experts in subjects particular subject so this is what we do so uh, like my laboratory we talk about the nutrition of the soils and within this nutrition on the soil what can be grown sometimes the nutrition can also be changed i can create a nutrition depending upon the requirement so that is where the science science of or the technology of the soils comes in the picture catering to the requirement of a project you create something hmm. all right so you have to do all this if this subject intrigues you then read more and more on different types of varieties of plants yeah so another example of the question could be sometime back when i was dealing with a contaminated soil and we wanted to rectify it so i had recommended some varieties of the plants for phytoremediation so phytoremediation is a very big subject uh, in uh, geotechnical engineering on which a uh, lot of people are working already so what species of chemicals can be logged all right logged in the sense 
that once you grow these type of plants, they have a uptake capacity and they will sorb all these type of heavy metals, concentration of chemicals and this chemical concentration cannot move from one place to another place, passivation. So, these are big, big subjects, uh, people like you should come forward and study them, yes. Sir, we have seen that uh, soil interaction with heat, uh, chemical etc. What about magnetic field? Yeah, so uh, this is less less studied, but my student one Dr. Susha Lakshmi. So her thesis, if you see in the paper that she, she has published, is the magnetic characterization of soils. It was published about two years back in ASTM. Go through that paper, and uh, I think our lab was the first to talk about the magnetic characterization of the soils and generalize the magnetization behavior of the soils. So, we are trying to classify the soils based on their magnetic characteristics and why we are doing this because uh, we want to understand the soil moisture content. So, you might not have thought by this time that how critical the soil moisture content is and soil moisture content depends upon the magnetic characteristics of the soils. Thank you.